Up until now, I've built every bench in my shop and I've customized them for specific tasks. So when Joburg reached out and asked me to try one of their benches, I wasn't sure if it would benefit my shop enough, especially since this one is smaller and lighter than any of the other benches that I have. So the big question is, will it add enough function to earn its keep in my shop? Or is it gonna end up on Craigslist? Let's find out. This is the Nordic Pro 1400 with the optional SM03 cabinet there on the bottom. This bench is made from solid European beach, and that's a great choice for a workbench because of how dense and durable the wood is. The overall dimensions are 56 inches long, 25 inches deep, and it comes right in at 35 and a half inches tall. If you consider that the main purpose for a bench like this is for hand tool work and traditional woodworking joinery, this is a great size bench for that task. Or if you're like me and you already have more than one bench in your shop, this will serve well as a secondary bench to work at. Now the bench by itself only weighs about 90 pounds. And when you add in the optional cabinet there on the bottom, that brings the total weight up to about 140 pounds. That may sound like a lot, but for a bench that's intended to be used with traditional woodworking tools, it can be on the light side. If you can pick up your bench fairly easily and move it around the shop, odds are it may not be heavy enough. One of the big things that you want in a workbench that's for traditional hand tools and woodworking is a lot of heft. Ooh, hefty. So that way while you're working and sawing, the bench isn't rocking or straight up moving across the shop. That can be really frustrating and make the job harder to complete. Joburg makes several varieties of benches ranging from about $500 all the way up to $4,000. Now this bench comes in right around the middle at $1,900. Things like the solid beach construction and the cabinet for tool storage there on the bottom set it above those lower price models. Now what makes it a bit more affordable than those top tier benches is that the bench top itself is a bit thinner and the vices that they use on this bench are not quite as robust as those you see on the top tier models. The top of this bench is made from full length laminated boards and that's going to help it to stay flat over time and prevent cupping. The middle of this workbench is 1 and 1 8 inches thick and then here at the apron it's 2 and 3 quarter inches thick. Now this isn't the beefiest bench top that Joburg makes but it's definitely going to hold up well and take a ton of abuse. One of the biggest things you need to be able to do with a workbench is securely hold your work down so you can work on it. And one of the fastest ways to do that is with a bench vise. Now when you use a vise like this in conjunction with some bench dogs, you not only have a ton of options for how you can hold pieces to the bench, but you have a lot of versatility in what size and shape items you can hold down. On the Nordic Pro 1400, you have two bench vices. One is on the end and one is on the face. Now depending if you're left-handed or right-handed, you can actually switch this vise to the other side or that vise to the other side to suit left-handed or right-handed workers. These vices operate smoothly and they're fairly robust, but if you have to clamp an item on just one side of the vise jaws, the vise is gonna rack. Now, this can be mitigated by clamping another piece of similar thickness on the opposite side of the vise, but if you're having to constantly do this, it can get a little bit tedious. If this is a big sticking point for you, then check out the Joburg Original or Elite Series workbenches. The vices that they use on those benches have rectangular bars instead of round rods to guide the vice jaws. So that way, if you clamp on just the left or the right hand side of the vise, it's not going to rack as you tighten it down. This bench has four rows of three quarter inch dog holes running the length of the bench top and two rows running across one end. And regardless of the location of your vices, at least two rows of dog holes are going to be lined up with each vise in any configuration. Dog holes are commonly used with bench dogs located in the workbench and in the top of the vise to hold pieces in place. They can also be used with traditional or modern holdfast clamps or any other variety of three quarter inch dog hole accessory. If you notice, there are also some dog holes here in the legs. And since the apron of this bench is also flush with the base, that means that you can clamp large items vertically and work on their edges while holding it secure with the vise and a holdfast or another bench dog. The tops of all the other workbenches in my shop overhang the base, and that's intentional, but it would make it difficult to do this kind of work. The bench dogs that come with the Nordic Pro 1400 are made from glass-filled nylon, and they have a little strip of spring steel wire here in the side that helps you to set the height of the bench dog right where you want it to be. Now what's nice is that since these bench dogs are made of nylon instead of steel or aluminum, you don't run the risk of damaging your blade if you accidentally slip while you're hand planing or using a chisel. Whoopsie daisy. Now don't think that vices or bench dogs are only used for holding down boards and projects to your bench. They're also really helpful for holding down jigs. And just one example is this jig that I use to cut the neck joint on an acoustic guitar. 
Another thing that I always look for in a workbench is a place to store some tools. If the bottom of your bench is just open and not doing anything for you, that's an oversight and a waste of valuable shop space. Some bench designs have a tray in the top, and that seems like a good idea in theory, but to me, they always get cluttered, filled up with shavings, and they reduce the amount of usable work surface that you have on your bench. I much prefer to have a cabinet with some drawers on the bottom where I can store some tools and keep things organized. And another thing that I like about this design is that the top of the cabinet can double as a shelf to store some commonly used items like a holdfast. This bench does require a little bit of assembly, but it's all pretty straightforward and can be knocked out in an afternoon. It's been a couple of weeks since I've gotten this bench assembled, and even when doing some hand planing, there is zero racking. So this little bench is stout, and it's got a permanent place here in the shop. Sorry, Craigslist, you're not gonna get this one. So here before too long, I'm gonna be kicking off another guitar build. This time it's an acoustic, and my plan is to do all of the work right here on this bench. I'll be able to store all my luthery tools there in the cabinet below, and the majority of the handwork is gonna happen right there on that bench top. What's awesome is that this guitar is gonna be on display in Carhartt's Nashville, Tennessee location. So you can go check it out there in person, or if the drive is a little bit prohibitive, the build video is gonna be here on the channel. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna see more tool reviews like this one, you can check out that playlist right there. Until next time, let the sawdust fly and have fun making something.